Hello, don't ask me why I'm doing this at this time, it's uh, quarter to one, Friday night, just come off a voice chat with uh, Hood actually, and PJ Grant. Anyway, this is a development, this is my queen, Rudinodus, sort of showing this to show you how I got the queen to move out of their sort of clay nest. And I had no confidence in this colony even being alive or anything, but the queen appeared, last, well I've been on holiday for a week, the week before I went, she just appeared sort of on the side here. Anyway, that's that's how I've gotten to move out the nest. So that's it's an experimental water feeder I made, but I've opened it up so they can actually climb in it, and they have done. They like it in there. It's moistened cotton wool in there, basically. So that's my Rugenodus colony, and what's left of it. So they're not exactly booming, but they are alive and they're active. I've just fed them tonight. So I've not decided what I'm going to do with them yet. I think I want to move them out of this, but they're only really at a test tube. Sort of size really, or well, well, keep them in that to be honest, they like that. But that, I don't know, I suppose I could make a hole in the top so I can moisten that a bit more and keep them in that. They like it, yeah, why not? So that's them. This is my shameful Lazius Niger. I shouldn't be showing this, okay? So that's a Lazius Niger colony in that tube. I was trying to change tubes, it didn't work. Can I get this? I'm not really getting a picture, am I? There's like a blurry thing there, okay? It's not working. This is my actual Lazius Niger colony that's in a naturalistic ish setup. The big nest on the back, I've shown this before. But this isn't, this is another Lazius Niger. And it was taped together, and I cut, put a tiny slit in that tape. And my plan was it sounds bad I wanted the Lazius Niger colony inside to come in and raid this one for brood. And I don't know if they did or not, really. There was a bit of an ant war going on for about two days, they were going crazy in there. But there wasn't really a big pile of bodies or anything, I think they were just buzzing around each other um, and then it's all settled down as far as I can tell I'm, I can't show you but there's, there's still a queen in there there's still well I can't see any brood so either it has been robbed or it's all changed into workers I'm not sure um, and I I spawn them a bit feed them quite well give them quite a lot of sugar juice they're okay and then in there that's my flavus carpet <laughs> they love making this little carpet there but I don't, I don't really like the way this is set up either. It's just just workers in an out world, basically. So I can't tell what's going on, really. So, yeah. It's not my favourite colony at all. I introduced a queen to him. And I don't know if she's still there or not. Well, I've got nowhere of knowing. That's the problem with these natural setups. So I don't know what's going on with them. Um, anyway. Right. Uh, oh, no, let's go this way. Remember Antcon? A bright light. I, I'm not using the flash on the camera, so wait. I, I'm not short on battery, but you know, look. Remember that? The Amazonian fighting tree has now gone. This is moss from out of my Venus flytrap. I did actually hibernate the Venus flytrap, you're supposed to put them in the fridge. Did that, came out, but it still died. But the moss was doing really well. I've been keeping it alive for the last two months. So this is actually very wet at the moment. I'll show you the water there, not really. But there's, I put a pint and a half, maybe two pints of water in there. Um, rearranged it, not very much actually, it's mainly Jake's design, anti Masses design. It's got some slightly different soil on top. I put about maybe five, six hundred springtails in there. And I put, um, I think it was four, three or four um, Hogman Saige giant isopods. So nothing's really going to happen in here for a few months, but eventually it should have big sort of 40 mil, inch and a half size isopods walking around in there. And potentially I might put some ants in it one day, but I want to keep this a really moist sort of end here. Hoffman say you actually like it dry, so they're going to have a dry top and a very moist bottom. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see if that works or not, I don't know. There we go. This is my new um, editing software. <laughs> called the palm of my hand <laughs> so you don't have to look at the rest of my house <laughs> anyway let's, let's show some development this is the main thing it's gonna work the light i've got set up the battery's a bit flat so it's not really well, it's, it's not too bad is it okay but this is not what i was expecting when i came back from holiday you've probably seen my last video it was crazy and this was just a carpet of cut up seeds anyway they've covered that over or done something with it i don't know there's a lot less action going on there's always action, they're always at it. But it's mainly digging action at the moment. 
there's probably not that many seeds left in there and I don't know how many what's happened to all the other seeds really and this is the remains of one of those elates either a queen see the bit of wing there chopped up big body there because they were I think I don't know if they were full-on queens I don't know what size a Mesa, Mesa Barbarus elate would be but these are the same size as a queen there's two of them walking around with wings on so these are antimatters sort of reserve colony of messes that he, he gave me very nice of him and uh, so they've had a massive head start there's probably I, don't, I couldn't guess between sort of maybe 300 ants something like that it was a lot a big colony but they've all disappeared into there um, and we'll see what's going to happen I'm just leaving them to it for a bit really they've got plenty of water the seeds in there just give them a couple of months to settle down so on the side out um, these are the weaver ants Polyrachis dives, three queen colony that I got from uh, Rich at uh, Antantix. I never seem to get a good picture on these, but um, had a disaster. <laughs> Came back on from holiday and I'd, I can fit one of those little, I'll put it away now, you know the little um, pipette type bottles with a metal nozzle on the end, it'll fit through one of those holes. That's obviously how they've been feeding them, so I put it in there and these are going to be, these are really for my son, they're going to go in his room because they're like an interesting ant. Loads of weird um, weaving going on, all that sort of stuff. In fact, I've, I've only just put the, I put the temperature down whilst I was on holiday. I don't want anything to happen because they're not technically on the um, thermostat. I've had a heat wave, I don't want them to cook. And I've put it up actually, but it's still not up high enough. When it gets up to about 28, 29, they get really active and start weaving against the side here. They've actually taken it down. That was There was a structure there, it's gone. And they've sort of re redone it over here. I didn't realise they took them down as well as put them up. They have done. Anyway, the disaster was... So I put the nozzle in, expecting my son to just put a few drips in, but he gave it a right good squeeze, and a big pool went down, knocked one worker in, and it drowned within about two seconds. I pulled the nozzle out, and I got, got a pin, and I was trying to fish it out, knock it to one side. I can't lift the lid on this thing, otherwise it will come flooding out. It's a big downside of this tubs and tubes thing. There's no bodies there now, I think. No, nothing at all. But there was one that drowned straight away, when I put that pin in and started trying to move it around, another three dropped in off the roof because they were sucking it from the hole. And they all drowned like instantly. And there was so much liquid in there, I think another three. It turned out there were seven bodies in the end, I counted. They've carried them all off now, using them as protein. And I'm not touching, this is the half the half of Rachel. I'm not touching, it's just been a disaster <laughs> keeping them in there. The Polyrachus dives, proper full on setup for Mokushi will arrive hopefully this week, this coming week. So, yeah. And I'm not messing about with it until that does, because every time I touch it, I kill something. Um, 24.1 in there with that thing, and it's set at 24. Oh, 24.1. Okay, so that's, that's actually showing about right. Um, that's you can probably see there. She's still just about kicking. That's my single Nico Queen. The, the, the Poly Nico Queens are in their own tubes. Still alive, but no brood. It's been uh, two weeks, two and a half weeks in there. I was kind of hoping they might do something by now. Anyway, another new development. Look at this mushroom that's appeared. <laughs> that wasn't there last Friday. So that's taken a week to grow. I've grown myself a nice new mushroom in there. Are we going to be able to see any tiny, tiny, tiny ants? These are like carpenter ants. They're not carpenter ants, so what they're called. Not, not nut ants, you know what I mean? Those little mini ants. I'm not going to see one anyway. That, that, a bit of a boring waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I didn't. I got them by accident. Right, so look at this. Look how clean and tidy this is all now. I had a big tidy up, moved everything out, got rid of the heat cable that was under all this. Um, I'm going to see if I can show you what's going on. Can I do it? Yeah, look at these. That's the irritants. And they are really cool. They're not as like they were actually. I should have done this video about an hour and a half ago when everything they were all out eating and it was all active. They're all settled down a bit now. The actual lights have all turned off. I've just turned them on to make this video. But they are cool ants. They're so pretty. And you see how well they're developing. I fished out four dead bodies, but that's about right. I think there was there was four nanitics from this queen and three from the other queen. And the, the three from the other queen, they, they dismembered when I let, put them in here. They were kept in the tube, in their old tubs and tubs, tubes set up with them. So they got the scent and everything. 
quite a while actually. I always, always struggle to do the elbow spursus. Elbow spursus. Elbow sparsus, I should say. I can't get a picture of them. There we are, that's it. Sort of see what's going on. I think they came with seven or eight workers and it's looking similar. I haven't counted them, I haven't really moved them around much. I've had all this out, but I didn't bother doing it. Um, I sort of wish I'd put them in a Venus actually, rather than there, because they're just not big enough to move in. Um, they seem happy, but they're fully nocturnal. Very, very rarely ever see a worker do anything at all. But they must do something at night time. The biggest development has been these. They're not going to be out now, are they? No. This is the um, Maculatus. When I left last Friday, there was three workers and some brood. Now there's at least eight workers, at least eight, and they're, they're much bigger than the nanitics that were walk, walking around. They're nowhere near as big as those over there. The irritants seem very big. The light, light yellow with the brown stripes, and they almost look like the maculatus that I've got here look almost like identical, but but smaller. Quite a lot smaller. I think these are Maculatus subnordius. They're not the normal, really bright yellow ones. Anyway, so I'm really pleased with them. They're actually living up to their reputation, starting to develop. You see, I've taken the heat cable out. There's still that tube they're in is on the heat mat. That heat mat is that's the heat mat temperature 28.1, and it's set at 28. So that's about right as well on that thing. <laughs> Surprisingly, I'm showing you a few actual accurate um, temperature things. I mean, not normally. So what's that one showing? Yeah, I think this one is high anyway, but that's 29.3, that's in there. And that should be a lot lower because it's only half on the heat mat. Oh, it's a lot lower, 24.9. That's Yeah, in that side, which is not under the heat mat. But I've, really, I've, I've swapped them around a bit just to see if it can make them develop a bit better. But these definitely like the heat. And I don't know what they like, they just don't seem to... <laughs> it's hard to tell. Um, now, these are doing really well. This is the roof of Glaucus. They were starving. They've drank half of that tonight since I put it in. I did actually give them a full one because they seem so hungry. They were licking the juice. They, they'd emptied their one before, which wasn't full. Emptied that. And uh, yeah, they're just really active, cool ants, to be honest, these. They look like giant Lassius Niger. It's the best thing I could describe them as. Um, I haven't got the flash on, have I? But I'm, just, I'm just using my sort of headlamp behind the camera. Do you know I mean they look like big Lazius Niger? But they do come in about three, four different sizes as well. Um, quite a load of cocoons. They move the cocoons out to here every day, depending on the temperature. This is a Gen 3 medium. In that hole there, I just put, I think it's 0 0.05 mil in a syringe. Um, so it's a tiny bit of water and it doesn't even reach the fill hole. And it's taken me a while to learn this, but it, it sort of osmoses through that into there and then you get that sort of bit of condensation there and that's enough, basically. I do that twice a week, on average, I think. They might seem happy enough with that. Um, oh yeah, Tetramorium bicarionatum. I can say it in a sort of fancy way. These are doing really well. I've got a feeding regime with these where I don't ever give them anything small enough for them to take it off and put it in those bamboo tubes. Oh, there's a few in here. There wasn't many in there early on because they've pretty much moved. Um, I'm going to show you this. It's going around this way. Okay. Look at that for a brood pile. Look at that. That wasn't there last Friday. Well, there was some of it. Probably third of it maximum I'd say so they've been really busy laying eggs and they started off in that tube there and you see where it goes because it out there into that big one there so there is actually a few in there um, but I had problems last time because they started dragging fruit flies and stuff like that into there and bits of mealworm and it went all mouldy so they have to go up this tube and the main nest is actually this the, the other one over there which they can't get any food into so I'm quite pleased about that down there I don't know if you're going to see them Hormica rufibarbus. I've actually moved all this around today, taken off, I've put an extra water tube there, taken off the um, small cork nest. I just don't think they're ever going to use it actually. 
um, and that'll be coming more useful. Not that they're actually out of water yet, they're about halfway on that tube. I don't want to hit that day because today was the day I was moving everything around. So I've taken out, there was two Venuses at the back there, one had a Paria screen in it and she's dead and the other had the uh, Cruentatus queen. She's always been healthy and happy and I retubed her and put her in the incubator up there with the two Nikos and gave her a drop of sugar. She was sitting on my finger cleaning herself, she was quite happy, not stressed. Um, this is the, I'm pretty sure that it's the Queen and not the Major. I was measuring over the ruler today because the Queen is 20 to 21 ish and the Major is 16 to 17 ish. So I think this is the Queen, I'm hoping it's the Queen. And the other one has completely disappeared. So either that's the Major and the Queen has burrowed somewhere, or as I think, that's the Queen and the Major has died and disappeared somewhere. But I've been hoovering out and trying to get rid of these isopods. I've got rid of as many as I possibly can today and before I went on holiday because I think they were, just, they were just overpowering her and getting in a, in a way and annoying her and I've put that over the plan with her and she's at the back now so she can be less disturbed and she the plan with her is to pretty much leave her alone she's had some food well she doesn't eat anyway but given her food um, and there's sugar juice in both those things up there whether she has it or not I don't know it's there as an option, but the plan with her is to just hang in there, just keep going, stay alive for another two, three months. Um, and in that time, hopefully, the uh, maculatus or the irritants, money's, money should be on the maculatus, but the way the irritants are going, it might not be. Um, look at that brood pile. I'm going to show you. It's not as big as it was because obviously they've all just hatched out, but it's it's not small. So, and as I say, the maculata have been doing really well. But uh, the original plan was to have a Nikos colony. It's not because I'm desperate to have Nikos anymore. I used to be until I discovered maculatus. <laughs> Once I know about maculatus, Nikos are kind of, you know, not as not as important. But they were important to be brood boosting all the other campos. That was the plan. So whatever setup I had with the Nikos, I was going to have one of these as well attached to let them put brood in the tubes and I can just rob a tube, take the brood out and stick it in with um, Singularis or Cruentatus or Parius, but she's died now, just to get them going, you know. I can't really take brood out of this lot, not that there's a huge amount to take anyway. But these sort of nests you can't, but that's, that's one of the things about the Saturn you can. I still I still like this traditional sort of nest for campos actually. But the convenience of those at the back there, you see, I could fit another two of those on top of there quite easily. So there's no more space taken up and I'd have two more colonies in Saturns. Or I could fit in that space there, it's got a Venus in, I could fit two in front of it. So potentially, in the mad scientist way, I could have two up there, two here. I'll do another four colonies if I wanted to in those little things. I don't know how how long lasting the irritants are going to be in there, and I don't think a maculatus would ever go in one of those. They should, if they get going properly, they go faster than Nikos, so they'd, they'd be a waste of time. Um, yeah, so it all feels a bit empty around here. I'm, I'm testing out this at the moment. This is the um, EA medium mesh nest, and I really like the look of it. I like the look. You can add water through those little holes at the back into different compartments. You can control who's going to be humid and which isn't. I, I like that idea. I, I just haven't got anything that's the right size to put in it right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with those Rudronodus, but they're just not big enough to go in there. They're like a test tube size. Um, same with these Formica rufa barbis, they're just not a, a big colony yet. They might, I think they will, they're growing, they're not, they're not going wrong in any way. And yeah, the Tetramorium, I, I want to try and fill all this up, but manageable with just this outworld if I can, that's the plan. And if I have to, I'll have to expand and change things around, but that's the plan. Okay, well I didn't touch on the Nazir's Niger particularly, I'm not going to. Okay, that was it, just a quick, well no, it's not quick. <laughs> Thank you for watching, if you made it this far. 
sorry if it's not as interesting as it kind of could be, but yeah. These ants are interesting, these are fun. They've got all the mealworm heads, giant mealworms. And I'll put the heads in because these are so neat. They do take them in here, they, yeah, there's one, look. That's what they're doing. They're all surrounding this uh, mealworm head there, all nibbling on it. But nothing ever gets left, well, not, not properly. There's a little dirty little ish corner there, but they drag it all out. You can trust them to take whatever they've put in there out again. Usually the next day, so I can trust them with dodgy bits, but I can't trust the tetramoriums. But yeah, there we go. Thank you.